Hello YouTube, this is Carrot Cakes bringing you another PGA Tour 2K23 video. TGC has finally begun. Hooray! I've qualified into Platinum as people expected. Uh, I played really well and I'm really proud of it. But now that it's TGC season, it's time for one of the main contents I want to be producing this season for all of you. I will be getting back to tutorials coming soon. Um, life has really gotten in the way um, of me making a lot more videos, but don't worry, I have something planned pretty soon. We're going to discuss short game stuff, and we're also going to discuss how I shot shape in this game and how it can uh, benefit your game. But for now, we're here in CC. I'm recording this a day ahead. Thanks to the graces of the scheduler, he gave me access to the conditions. We are playing on Elsted Heath GC. This is the CC course for this week, the challenge circuit. So if you are qualifying this week or you get placed into the challenge circuit flights, this is what you will be playing on. Q, the scheduler, I spoke to him a bit. And he told me that he's going to start off CC quite easy because there's a lot of people who are new to this game and are learning to play, whether it's learning to play on Master or just learning this game in general. Maybe they came from 2K21 and haven't had a lot of time to play, but keeping things easy as people sort out their gameplay and climb the tours. The first week of CC officially starts Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I believe it's like 12 UTC or something, uh, Sunday, but this is the start of the season and here we go. We're finally here. I'm sure you're all excited and are looking forward to it, but this is a CC course playthrough. I'm going to go through these every week and have hopefully the round one condition set up just for all of you so you can see how it plays, how you can practice and everything. So let's look at the conditions. We're playing on the back tees. So let's set that up. Back tees, pin one. We go down here. It is low winds from the north. Default, default firmnesses and moderate green speeds. This is the default conditions for this week. So as you can see, I've set them up. They are there. This is the first week. This is uh, pin one conditions. So this is what you will be going into round number one. I'm going to be using the purple magnet ball because we're already on 144 green speeds. I don't want to reduce them anymore. Um, I could uh, grab the legendary ball, but I want to show you all how it works with the, with the purple ball. And we're just going to go at it and see how it goes. So let's get to it. We're going to go in and, and just see how we play. As always, please subscribe, like, comment, do all those things. It'll really help me out with creating PGA Tour 2K23 content. And let me know what you think about this video at the end. What you want, what else you want me to discuss and everything. So we start off with a very short par four. And in this scenario, as a platinum player, I'm just going to full send it 110 with loft, as you can see. So I'm going to keep true shot on. This is a good way to practice is to learn your shot shaping. How much does fade, draw, D loft, loft all play? You can slowly learn these things with a true shot setting on. Let me just check my settings just to make sure there's nothing I, I need to turn on real quick. We're on master with swing timing off. We turn these on. I'm going to turn on course yardage so we can see the marker. Turn on true shot and uh, turn on the aim marker and the lie grid. Um, if you have this on, you can see the distance. Um, in your rounds, you can't see the distance. So this is a good way to practice at least. So as you can see, if I full loft it, I get six more yards. If I also put full spin or not even full spin, but a good amount of spin, you also will gain more yardage and this will make the tailwind play a little bit more. But we're just gonna loft it and you make the decision if you need to lay back and hit a full shot but otherwise 
This is what I think all most people will do. And I will just show you guys how I play. The mistakes I make. Like I'm not going to practice swing. Um, which is something I would always do. In in my official rounds, but since we're just playing a casual round, let's just let's just play quickly and explain things. So if you're in this bunker, as you can see, it's all downhill. You're gonna want to put full spin either on a chip or a splash, depending on your play style. And as long as you land somewhere short, it's gonna roll out. So let's play out here. I usually shank to the right, so I'm gonna play a little bit over here. We had a pretty bad slow, but it's gonna roll down. Because we had all that downhill. And that's what we planned for. Pretty easy hole lo pin location. If you're playing from the fairway, it'll be a little easier. I obviously hit too much of a slow. Second hole. These are wide open fairways. So try not to miss the fairway. It's a pretty short hole again. Because the wind isn't in our face. And if we have distance on our clubs, we can reach here very easily. So we're going to aim left. There we go. We got a perfect. Just get it in the fairway. All right. Remember, we have magnet balls, so these greens will land softer. So here, this is exactly what I mean. You can start learning your shot shaping. Something I will talk about in my loft video is using loft makes the ball stop much softer as well. We're going to loft to about here. It's, you know, we're going to go see if we can aim pin high-ish. We're going to lose a yard or two from the elevation and, and gain like half a yard from the wind. So this should be pretty good. I always aim a little bit to the left. And then I pull back my aim marker because it helps me. I discussed that in the transition video. Shanked it way too much. I don't want that bad of a shank. But as you can see, we loft it and lands nice and soft. So let's look at the green as well. So that slope on the left is also why I aim left. If I hit a pass, the slope should be good to help me with my shank. So as long as you're in this area, even if you're landing a bit short, if you have a longer shot in, just play it a little bit on the left and let it roll to the right. Like your birdie. Nice and easy. Alright, hole three. Again, you can't miss these fairways. They're kind of big. Here I'm going to probably lay up a little bit just to make sure we're in the fairway. I would advise this if you have a really long club and you're not too confident with your tempo. To make sure we hit the fairway no matter what. Hit it a bit fast. But we're in the fairway. That's all that we need. Another short hole. Wind is just in our face. We can de-loft this or we can loft the pitching wedge. In this scenario, I'm going to try de-lofting. Put a little forward spin on it as well. Play about here. Pull it back because I like to do my transition thing. And we hit it a bit fast. Unfortunate. But that's a fairly straightforward shot. You're just aiming for the pin. And we get quite a bit of a break, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Might have under hit it. I did. So it broke a little bit more and we missed just short. But that's fine. We're still in good shape. All right. 171. Up a little, wind slightly at our back. If the wind is pointing more north, it'll be like more like this. Um, so it'll be anywhere from here to here. So slight, very, very slight wind at our back. We're just going to loft it like a yard or two or three. And kind of aim at the pin. It's safer to be on the right side than the left. But if you're too far to the right with a bad slow or something... You're going to have a bit of a downhill chip. And that could be dangerous. You don't really want a downhill chip, but it's just how much you want to play. Being on the left side, 
will give you a pretty straight uphill putt. So that's why I'm kind of aiming closer to pin high. If I fast it, it would have been a straight putt up. But otherwise, very close shot. See, I compensate for my miss. That's why I aimed slightly left. Wind brought us back just a touch, not really playing that much. All right, again, we got another long shot. Green, sloping downhill past the hole. So we know we want to get it pretty close in wedge range. I'm going to pull out the three wood. Why the three wood? Well, I can loft the three wood for a little extra yardage. And I don't want to get too close where I have to pitch it. I want to have a nice full shot into this. Pull it back. Uh oh, too fast. Well, this is the mistakes. And you are punished heavily. Because now we have to make it on the green. We have to make it on the green and then get it to stop before it goes downhill. So this is, this was not good, especially since we got a really bad lie. We're going to assume we get a 70% lie. So 0 0.7 times 157 is 109, 110. We're hoping it gets there. We're just going to hit it and pray. We're going to put some spin on this to see if we can get a little higher percentage. Right, this is all uphill, so with our spin, we're hoping it stops before it gets to the downhill part. Well, it got to the downhill part a little bit, but that means we have an uphill shot. Very good. So obviously, if you can afford it, make sure you get in the fairway. Don't do what I did. That's the, that's the trouble with overpowering. I got greedy. I'm going to overpower here again. Because watch me do it again. You want to see me do it again? It's a long par 5, so if you want to reach in 2, you're going to need to take a little bit of risk here. Fasted it too much, and we're in the rough again. So, there you go. There's your... Oh, we got lucky. We got a light rough. But that's what happens. So... If you are in the fairway, you're going to have a three wood in or driver off the deck in. Maybe a three hybrid if you overpower successfully, unlike me. But otherwise, you have plenty of room to run with. If you aim on the right side, you, you can get up to here and then it'll come back left. You're going to have to aim on the right side on this hole, but otherwise you can kind of aim like in this area and you're going to have a nice uphill putt from like down here. Anything uphill is always good. On the green is more important than being right next to the hole in the in in the game right now. So let's see. You know, this is gonna roll out some because we're coming out of the light rough and it's uphill, so it's gonna get more. So we're just gonna take this and send it. Kinda perfect and overpowered it a little bit. Will this bounce to the left? Nope, it was we got too high. So it was traveling still too fast for it to catch the ridge and go to the left. I think we were also a little bit too far to the right. But as you can see, it's a tough, it's gonna be tough to hold it because this is all downhill no matter where you come from. It's all downhill. So if you're on the green, it'll be a little easier to stay on the green. But if you go for the pin like I just did, that's what's going to happen. So we're not going to go too greedy here. And get very lucky. Sometimes good. Sometimes lucky. That was definitely a case of lucky. So here you go. Off the tee, remember, if you don't hit 100%, you're going to get extra yardage. Do remember, you have a guaranteed 100% lie. 
So we're going to loft it a little bit because there's wind at our back. We're playing a longer club, six iron with slight wind at our back. It's going to want to bounce a little bit forward and roll out a little bit. Try not to slow it because you'll have a downhill chip again, as you can see. So if you're going to aim for a safe play, aim for the middle of the green around here and have a nice uphill putt, as you can see. It'll be uphill at least. It's a lot of break if you're pin high, but at least it'll be uphill. Ah, we got too much of a fast. But it's safe. And sometimes safe on these trickier holes is going to be helpful. There's a lot of break. We're going to see if we can stay above the hole. Or at least be pretty close. Still under. These 134s, they break a lot. This game in general just breaks way more. All right, our first kind of semi-tough hole. Very long, but you just need to be in the fairway. Because as you can see, there is a backstop here. So as long as you're in the fairway and can control your distance, you'll be in a good spot. Let's calm down our swing. We've had a bunch of fasts, so let's get it perfect for once. Three at the back. Again, we have the backstop. A little uphill. I'm going to hit this straight up because three at the back, we're probably gaining two to three yards. Elevation, we're losing three to four yards. So it cancels out. Like even I could even give it a little bit more if I want here. So why don't we just deloft and make sure it rolls out a little bit. Big slope at our feet. When, if you had a perfectly straight swing plane, the slope will probably play about like two to three yards here and the wind will not bring it back that much. So we're going to aim out here. And it's uphill enough that if you have like a 9 iron or an 8 iron into there, it will die as long as you land short. And don't fast it too bad or come out of the rough. All right, again, playing well, just keep it up. Pretty flat at the hole. Angle doesn't matter too much. Don't be in the rough, obviously. Don't be in the sand. Sand will make this an extremely difficult hold, hold because it's all downhill. If it's all downhill, you're not going to stop it without full backspin and more wind in your face. Unless you full loft it full spin. We're going to put a little bit of shape on this because I want it to make sure it goes to the right and avoids those bunkers on the left. Especially if we fast it, there's a risk that it goes left. But here with a little bit of shape, we stay in the middle of the fairway. Perfect. Nice, pretty flat. Wind not too much in our face. We're going to loft it just a touch so that the elevation, and especially since it's a downhill lie anyways, or downhill at the hole, this should be pretty good. If you're worried about fasting it off the green, aim more in the middle here. Like... Even if I were to aim right here, this would be pretty good because like if I even if I push it and slight fast it, we're in like this range. But if I play aggressive like I always do, right, a fast is going to be off the green. So pick your poison here. Do you want to make sure you want to get as close as you possibly can to the hole or play it a little bit safer? I trust my tempo most of the time, so I went for it. We have magnet ball, so it softly lands a little softer than expected. And then look at that. Pin high. Let's go. 
you know, Hugo Boss stuff in the shop. And Boss Woman on. Because I'm a boss. Oh, here we go. Another drivable, except this one is guaranteed drivable. So, there's a lot of options here. We can fade it and play it on this side so that it comes in. It comes in like this. And it's coming, it's coming, and it's going to the right. And then it comes down here. And then hopefully it sticks on the green. But likely what's going to happen is we're going to be somewhere in this area. Um, you can draw it. That's a little more aggressive, right? We draw it into the slope. Into this area so that it dies a little bit easier. And there's more of a chance for it to hold here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shape it like this. As you can see, now we can see our distance. We're going to gain extra off the T and downhill. So we know we need to be a little shorter as well. So here you can do more shape or you could now partial it, which is, I think, what I'm going to do. I'm going to partial this intentionally. It's going to be like a 97, 98 percent. Got a little slow, but again, I think we just about got it. As you can see, it lands a little softer, but we were a little too short, so it ended up not catching the ridge and stuff. So unfortunate, but it was a good attempt, and we left ourselves in a good position. We're on a downhill slope, so you're going to want to add spin to this. It's all downhill, so you need to put spin on this. Make sure you're not too long and don't fast it too much. Ooh, almost got really lucky there. But it stopped. And into the hole. All right. Oh, we got a challenge 10 XP for hitting the green and regulation or fairway and regulation, which we want to do anyways, because it's a, it's a medium ish length par four. A little long it's a little shorter in this version of the game now because now we have longer clubs than we did in 2k21 so this isn't as bad we're just gonna try to hit the fairway little tiny fast the wind is holding it up good good here we go 140 two up 10 so in this case, again, I'm going to be a little more aggressive and do the little D-loft. Make sure we get there. Wind's going to be slightly in our face when we aim. This lie plays maybe like two yards on a gap wedge. The shorter your club, the less impact the lie is going to have on your clubs. Um, because if this was like my three iron, I'd play this like four or five yards. But we're on a gap wedge, probably like two yards. But we're gonna shank we're gonna probably shank it and the wind's gonna play. So probably around here ish. Pull it back because of my method. A little too fast. So unfortunately it hooks. We got the distance we wanted, but as you can see, missing tempo. I don't I don't hit every tempo. I might be in platinum, but I'm not perfect. Especially when I'm talking. Oh, almost, almost. Good read, good read. Putt weight is really important. It's a lot harder to hit the right power in this game, so make sure you practice swinging if you need to. All right, we're sending it. We're going for it. Long hole. We need all the distance we can get to see how close we can get. Again. Black fast. Not been not been good with those. Make sure we lay up. Actually, we could go for this. And we are. This is risky. I wouldn't suggest this if you're a lowly CC player. As you can see, it can go very, 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 very wrong. So now I got heavy rough and I'm short sighted. So 
I'm going to put a bunch of spin and see if we can get this to stop. A little loft as well. It's about as good as we can get. These putts are tough. I struggle with these sometimes. Definitely helps to hit it a little more firm. But the risk is if you miss it, it's gone. Goodbye ball, right? So, if you want to play that way, just live with the consequences. We're putting forward spin on this. So the reason why is Lob Wedge likes to bite and come back, right? Especially on these yellowish slopes. Remember, we're on 132. So if these were 170s, these slopes would be almost orange. Starting to turn a little brighter too. So these want to come back. So whenever I loft, especially when I loft, if I don't want it to come back so much, you put some forward spin on it so that it doesn't come back. So we're going to loft it, put a bunch of forward spin. Hit it way too fast again. <laughs> Tempo's a little all over the place. But it's not too bad of a hole if you hit your tempo. You're going to be in a good spot. I'm getting better at chipping. <laughs> oh, sometimes lucky. Hit the green in regulation, huh? Downhill, so again, you're wanting to be as close as you possibly can be. That's a little fast. But we're in the fairway. Pretty big slope, but again, we're playing like a lob wedge or a sand wedge on this situation. You don't want to worry too much about it. We're going to deloft, make sure it gets there. It's all downhill, but a, a, a lob wedge is going to check up. So play it out here a little bit. The slope's going to play out a bit at least. There we go. There's our perfect. As you can see, around three, four yards, it went to the right. Deloft was not wasted. Lob wedge bites. Lob wedge loves to bite. And there you go. Pretty easy. It's downhill, so the further out you are, the harder it will be to stop that ball. If you have to use a nine iron because you're out of the rough or something, it's going to be hard to, to get a birdie. little slow again i'm being greedy with overpowers you do not need to overpower at all here but i'm a psychopath and i must overpower because i have a sickness or something here you're gonna have again a short club be careful about spin i'm coming out of the light route so i'm not too worried about it coming back but if this was a lob wedge pitch or a full lob wedge shot you have to think about do I need to land it up here so that when it comes back, it doesn't come back all the way? Look how much this is sloped. This wants to come back. So be careful. A little fast guarantees basically we're not coming back. Especially out of the light rough. The good thing about the rough is it will not come back in that situation unless you add a lot of backspin. Alright. Long par 4. If you have a long 3 iron, this is going to be beneficial to you. Long par 3, rather. Sorry. Um, my, my 3 iron is not that long. Like, you can get your 3 iron to, like, 245 or something with, like, really high power and flight ball, but... We don't quite have that, but I'm thinking I'm going to do this. 252, 250, 246, 245. I'm hoping this has at least a little bit of rollout. We can add some spin. As you can see, spin adds distance and makes the wind play a little bit more as well. So, like, I'm going to see if we can be a little bit greedy here and try to do this. As you can see, shanking your 3-iron is going to shank it a lot further than 
your lob wedge, as I showed earlier. We got the distance I wanted. A little higher up here than I wanted, but I wanted to protect against the fast. Burst management matters a lot in this game. You need to know your misses. If you generally miss fast, you need to aim a little more right or left, depending on your handedness. Went for a little greedy play, playing on that right side. Here, two options. You can deal off the gap wedge. You can loft the pitching wedge. I showed you the gap wedge de-loft earlier, so why don't we try lofting instead? Gonna be just over. The wind's not too much in our face. Slope. Wind should counteract my shy, my my sh little bit of a shank. A little fast should be good though. And this is why I like loft. Look at that stop. We're a little high because of the fast, but I went for a pin high greedy play. Should have played a little shorter, but I didn't want the wind to potentially play a little bit more. I slow as well. It's it's a little struggle. Doesn't want to start breaking for a little bit. It looks like hi. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Thought about bringing it back. Those those putts can sometimes be tricky. Finally, we get to the 18th. It's a par five. You have plenty of room again. Just get it in the fairway. Just get it in the fairway. You don't need to overpower this shot because it is a shorter par five. I accidentally, quote unquote, overpowered a little bit. Got a 103, but. Longer shot. I'm going to go like full loft. Should land probably like around 220. Maybe we take a little bit less. Or a little bit less long. Lie and wind are going to bring it back a little bit. A little fast. This, m this should be good, though. Oh... And here we go. Let's finish off nice and strong. Good job. Nice and strong. Well, there we go. And that is a playthrough of to this week's CC course. As you can see, I was off the fairway way too much. If you're in the fairway, you'll have a slightly easier time. Scoring is out there. It's not a hard, difficult course. Um, and in practice swing, my tempo was all over the place. So whatever. I was at least making pretty solid reads. But that's how you play this week's CC course. Elston, Elstead Heath Golf Club. Nice, easy track. Good way to warm up for you all. So thank you all so much for watching. Leave a comment. Please subscribe. Give it a like. And let me know... If you found this enjoyable, informative, if you would like me to discuss more, less, um, what else you need to do to learn, just hit me up. Let me know. Hopefully you like this kind of content and this is beneficial for everybody who is in CC and trying to learn from the best. This is Carrot Cakes. Love you guys. Mean it. As always, I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.